Finding the equation of a linear relationship, lesson 5.3a. We can use the points on a graph of a linear relationship to write an equation for the relationship. The equation of a linear relationship is an equation in slope-intercept form, y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the rate of change, or slope, and b is the value of y when x is zero. It's where the line crosses the y-axis, isn't it? So here are the steps to finding the equation of a linear relationship. First thing we do is show that the relationship is linear by seeing if the points lie on the same line. Or we may already have a graph that they are on the same line and we already know it. Second thing we do is write the equation of the linear relationship by choosing two points, two ordered pairs to find the slope, and using a point and the slope to find the y-intercept b. Then we write the equation. So here's our first problem. The charge for a pizza changes as the number of toppings changes. Show that the relationship is linear and find the equation for the relationship. So the first thing we do is see that a straight line passes through all the points. So the relationship is linear. Now we find the slope from two points. So I chose this point and this point. We have a 2, 7 and a 4, 8. We do 8 minus 7 for the y sub 2 minus y sub 1 in the slope formula, and 4 minus 2 for the x sub 2 minus x sub 1. We get 1 half. Now, we have to pay attention to what's happening here. They're talking about the charge, the cost for pizza toppings. So we know that this one half is actually 50 cents. The charge is increasing as we add more toppings. The cost of the pizza is increasing. So our slope, our rate of change is 50 cents, and that's 50 cents per topping. We use a point and the slope to find the y-intercept b. So I decided to use this first point, 2, 7, and I substituted them into the equation for the slope-intercept form. So for y, I have 7, and for x, I have 2, and I have my slope here. I multiply 50 cents times 2, which gives me a dollar. Now, we subtract this one dollar from both sides of the equation to solve it algebraically. And we get 6 is equal to b. This positive 1 and negative 1 makes a zero pair, doesn't it? So we're just left with 6 is equal to b. Now we can write our equation. We know what the y-intercept is. It's 6. We have y is equal to 50 cents x plus 6. So be careful with your rates of change. We have y is our total cost, 50 cents is the price per topping, x is the number of toppings, and $6 is the base cost of the pizza, the initial cost of the pizza. Since the rate of change for this equation represents a money amount, the cost for the, each topping that we add, we change the fraction one half to a dollar sign zero, a decimal point five zero for 50 cents. We can use this equation to find the total cost of a pizza with any number of toppings. We have one half is represented by the 50 cents. Here we have a graph, and it's telling us to find the equation of the linear relationship. First thing we do is identify the ordered pairs. For the first point, we have a 1, 30. For the second point, if this is 1, that's 2, 3, 4, 5. That means that's 3 for x and 50 for y. The next point is 5 for x and 70 for y. And the next point is, if that's 5, that's 6, that's 7 for x and 90 for y. We find the slope, m, using the slope formula. We choose two of the ordered pairs. I chose these two. So we have 50 minus 30 over 3 minus 1. That gives us 20 over 2, which simplifies to 10. We know the slope, the rate of change, is 10. Now we find the y-intercept. And we can see it's 20 on the graph. We can see it right there. It's hitting the y-axis at 20. Or we could use a point and the slope to find it, to prove it. So I'm using this point, 130, the first one, and I'm using that slope, 10, and I substitute them into the slope-intercept equation. So y is 30, x is 1, our slope is 10, 
We multiply and do 10 times 1, which is 10. Now we have 30 is equal to 10 plus b. We're slowly going to find out the value of b, this y-intercept. Now we subtract this 10 from both sides of the equation to solve it algebraically. We have a plus 10 minus 10, a positive 10, negative 10. So that's going to create a zero pair and eliminate it. When we take 10 away from this side, we get a 20. We know our y-intercept b is 20. Now we can write the equation. We know that y is equal to 10x plus 20. Again, we need to find the equation of the linear relationship. So first thing we do is take a look at this table. It's showing hours for x and the number of units for y. We don't know what the units are, but it doesn't matter. We need to find the slope. So we're going to use the slope formula, and we're going to choose two of these as ordered pairs. We have 4 for x, 24 for y, and 7 for x, and 42 for y. So using the slope formula, we have 42 minus 24, which is 18, and 7 minus 4, which is 3. We have 18 over 3, and when we simplify it, we get 6 for our slope, for our rate of change. Now we use a point and the slope to find the y-intercept b. We substitute 24 for y and 4 for x. We have our slope 6. We multiply and get 24 is equal to 24 plus b. Now, we're at this point, and common sense tells us that b has got to be 0. If this is 24 and this is 24, b has to be 0. But we can subtract 24 from each side to prove it mathematically. So we have a positive 24 with a negative 24, which cancel each other out as a zero pair, and so do these, so we have zero is equal to b. Our equation is y is equal to 6x, because we don't need to write plus zero. We could, but we don't need to. Now, we need to be careful when reading ordered pairs. If they're not given and we just see the points, we're going to need to read them carefully. Here we have one for x, and this point is in between the 2 and the 3. It's right in the center. So we say it's 2.5. And this point is 4 for x, but it's in between the 3 and 4 for y. So we say that's 3.5. We need to pay attention to the increments on each scale. Here we can see they're skip counting by 5s. But this point is at 5 for x, and it's in between 10 and 15 for y. In between 10 and 15 would be 12.5. Then we have one that's easy because it's on the cross of the grid, so we know it's 10 for x, 20 for y. But then this one is on 15 for x, and in between 25 and 30, which means we can say it's 27.5 for y. We're finished with 5.3a. We're moving on to b, making predictions of a linear relationship. I hope you've been able to see all the lessons in Module 5 so far, because if you have, you're going to be very proficient in writing linear equations. Enjoy the rest of your day, and join me for the second part of the lesson. Bye!